Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spinning Venom, aka The Venom Vlog, and today we are going to review and discuss Venom number 7 by Donny Cates and our friend uh, Iban Coella, who does the artwork. And I'm so glad he's back on this because I really liked his stuff in Venomverse and uh, Venomized, and he did a really good job in those books. So I was really curious to see, um, you know, where the story was going to go. And I'll be honest with you, after the Donny Cates first six issues, I wasn't like a huge fan of what was going on. I like the overall concepts, like I always say, but some of those executions are not working for me on Donny Cates' level. Uh, like his structuring, his pacing, uh, they don't work. They, this is not very interesting, uh, but the concepts are. So I keep coming back for that and Ryan Stegman's art. And now I'm gonna come back for Iban Coella's art because his art is phenomenal. I love his stuff. So before we get into this, I'm gonna give out the digital code, boom, right there. First person to put that code in, go to that website, put the code in and you will get a free copy of this. But it only works one time. So first person to uh, put the code in gets it, obviously. So now without further ado, we're gonna get into spoilers, uh, but uh, I don't know how much in depth I'm gonna get in this book. I'm just gonna tell you right now, uh, this episode I'm just gonna call Criticism for Donny Cates, I, I, in a way, because uh, Donny Cates, this is the seventh issue of Venom. Uh, issue number seven, okay? That's all we've had so far, seven issues from your run. And three of them, including this issue, three out of you know seven books. So four that you didn't do this in. Uh, well, one you did half in, but I won't count it. You know, But this is the third issue where we basically have Eddie Brock sitting and being told stuff. This is awful. From a story writing standpoint, if you'll just hear me out, I do not find this compelling or interesting at all. Again, the ideas in here are very interesting. You have Eddie Brock uh, at the end of the last event, you know, at the end of the sixth issue, he was like left for dead, him in the suit. And then uh, you, you have someone narrating and talking to Eddie again, entirely, most of the book, like 22 pages this is the book length or roughly, and about like 17 of them are just Eddie Brock in a chair. Why would you waste a good artist? Like Ibon Coelho is a great artist. And uh, some of you may disagree with me on this, but this is not what I would have Ibon drawing, is just this. Uh, he's so much better than this. He's a great artist and you need to use your artist to their fullest potential. This is just not interesting. Uh, you, This is the third time you've done it. You've had Rex, you know, tie Eddie Brock to a chair and tell him everything. You've had uh, Null, uh, you know, just hold Eddie Brock and tell him everything. And now you have, uh, spoiler alert, you have the Maker, who is a great character. It's an alternate universe, Reed Richards from the Ultimate Universe. I have every issue of Ultimate Fantastic Four. I really like that book and I like the direction they took Reed Richards in. I like that they made him a villain. Uh, it's really cool to see him in this, but that either should have been the ending, the last page, not like the seventh page, um, because the final page in this was kind of garbage. It was uh, Eddie Brock finding out that Flash Thompson's dead. So it's like, wait, Flash Thompson's dead? To be continued. Totally not the interesting moment in this book that you could have ended on. You could have ended on the maker being revealed, um, or you could have ended on Eddie Brock going to see his father. Uh, you know, so you have actually a scene here where Eddie Brock's at his house in San Francisco, uh, at his dad's house, and he finds out that A, hey, he may have a little brother, a uh, stepbrother maybe, I'm guessing, because Eddie Brock's mom died in childbirth. Uh, so Eddie was, you know, like a, a younger child. He had an older sister. Apparently that's been retconned uh, for whatever reason. I don't know, maybe Donnie Cates can tell us one day, uh, but it looks like he's adding a stepbrother or, or some kind. Uh, but you have this really interesting concept of, okay, Eddie Brock at the end of the last issue was left for dead. Um, and, st and instead of cutting to this and showing someone talk, you should have just stuck with this, in my opinion, uh, Donnie Cates. I would call that an oversight. I think the editor should have probably worked with you on that. Uh, and I know you guys aren't used to seeing me get this ranty and th this upset, but uh, this is the guy who I was really excited to see his run on Venom. And I am just constantly disappointed by his, uh, his approach to storytelling because it's the same thing over and over. Seven issues. And this is the third time we've seen someone just strap Eddie Brock down to something and tell him the whole story. And that's not good storytelling, in my opinion, especially that many times in a row. Uh, that's ridiculous. So what you should have done is just start off the book with this. Uh, don't cut to this. Cut out all the dialogue of the person narrating. None of it's interesting anyway. And you just focus on this moment where someone sticks a gun in and retrieves a sample, I'm assuming, of Null. So I guess that's how Null's going to survive. And then you have Eddie Brock, and he turns out he's still alive. And then what do they do? They cut to the boring conversation. I would have cut all this out, and I would have just kept telling that story of Eddie Brock. What happens to Eddie Brock once he wakes up? Well, 
five or six pages later, we get this awesome spread by Yvonne. Looks amazing. So the suit uh, reacts to Eddie, you know, being approached by those guards and cuts him loose. And he goes around and kills most of the men there. Whether the man who, uh, you know, got the sim like the, the sample of Null or not, whether he still lived or, the you know, the sample lived or whatever, we don't really know. They just kind of rush through because Donnie Cates wants to explain that the green saliva that comes out of Venom is how uh, the Venom suit excretes excrement of some kind. You know, whether it eats people or just has like, you know, waste inside of it, apparently the green saliva is is how it, uh, you know, expunges the waste. And it's like, okay, that's fine. It's a neat little you know, fun fact, I guess. But uh, just the way it's all handled here, because all because he wants this guy to narrate the whole book is, is absurd to me. Um, it should have just cut to that, shown the green stuff hit. You could have explained that later or in a future issue uh, that it's waste if you wanted to, you know, go that detailed. Um, it's funny that you would go that detailed on like the, the green waste coming out of him, but you would retcon, you know, Eddie's sister. Like again, these are my problems with Donnie Cates is that he's a good writer. I know he's a good writer. I liked his other stuff, but with Venom, um, I'm really hating the structure of his story. Uh, I, I really wish he would just write the story because all this is cool. All these are my favorite pages where Ebon is just cut loose and it has Venom running, you know, on the run from these guards. It says Eddie Brock was on the run for three weeks. Again, don't tell us that. Show it. Make this whole book about that, about the three weeks he's on the run where he's unconscious and the suit is just acting at a defense. And then it shows Eddie Brock getting to San Francisco and his dad, uh, you know, basically, you know, not helping him and saying like, Dylan, go back inside. So apparently Eddie has a younger brother named Dylan, um, or maybe, you know, this isn't really Eddie's father because they mentioned that uh, the suit is manipulating uh, Eddie Brock's memories for whatever reason. And again, those are all great things, and those are things we kind of knew before, uh, because at the end of Donnie Cates' run, they talked about how the suit was hiding something from Eddie Brock and how it could kind of shift around his mind and memories and keep things from him. So it's not unheard of. It's something we've definitely seen before. Uh, but uh, they, you know, they just kind of barrel through all that just so they can get back to, you know, this very uninteresting uh, dialogue, in my opinion, between two really great characters. Uh, I, I I'm love that Eddie Brock has garnered the attention of a cosmic character like Reed Richards, like this version of Reed Richards, the maker, who clearly has a plan for Null. He wants to use a Null sample. He wants to use the you know, Eddie symbiote and its connection to the Null sample. I'm sure that's all part of the story, and that's what we're going to see is, you know, this Reed Richards or the maker wants to, uh, you know, use Null's power or the fact that he's ancient. I mean, this is, that's what this maker character kind of uh, is. He's like a cosmic entity kind of guy. Like, he wants to do cosmic things. He doesn't want to just take over the world. He wants to rewrite things and everything. So maybe having a connection to Null, that's why he He's interested so it makes sense uh, all these things make sense but they're just handled in such a poor way uh, all for these little reveals that don't really matter much it's like oh the suit's dead but it's still reacting and saving Eddie why does someone have to tell Eddie that why can't Eddie do things on his own and and find these things out for himself and find out on his own that the suits hiding secrets from him why does it always have to be someone telling him he just feels like a ghost in his own story he just feels like he's literally sitting in a chair and being told the story that we the audience are reading while we're sitting in chairs reading it it's meta in the worst way, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, so all this, and then he says, you know, Flash Thompson's dead. Otherwise, he would have gone and got Flash Thompson. And then Eddie's like, wait, Flash Thompson's dead? And that's how the book ends. And uh, to me, this was easily my least favorite issue um, of the book, uh, which is sad to say because I really didn't like issue, I think, two of Venom and a couple of the other issues in the first six issues. This is not how you handle a good artist like Yvonne Coella. And also when he did with Ryan Stegman, he's like, hey, Ryan, draw Venom sitting in a chair for, you know, or Eddie Brock sitting in a chair for six pages. It's like, why do you do this to your writers, Donny Cates? I don't understand. You are a very talented person, but you do not show it to me on these Venom books. All you know how to do is have Eddie Brock sit down and be told his life story from someone else who knows things, you know, knows more than he does. And that is not make, does not make him an interesting character. It doesn't make me want to, you know, support him or root for him. Uh, it, he just seems like he's stumbling through stuff and he's just, you know, it's, 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 it's bad. It's really bad. I can't even say it any other way. I've been very patient with this book and I've certainly give it praise when I think it deserves praise. Uh, but I also, I have to trash it, uh, in, in, in the most constructive way possible. I, you know, obviously there's still room to grow. There's still things that can pan out in this, but this as a single issue it just feels like a waste. If, if someone told me, hey, you're going to write a book with Yvonne Coella and it's going to be about Venom, I would write the living hell out of that book and have crazy stuff happen all the time on every page. I would just go full nuts. Like, I, I, obviously, I would have moments where people have to talk. You have to get story in there. You have to get conversations in there. You have to get characterization stuff in there. Um, I understand that. But you don't make three-fourths of the book 
two people talking in a room, a boring room at that, with no background, no nothing, you know, not even like a holographic room where they're trying to manipulate Eddie Brock's mind and they're like, hey, look, we're in your, your childhood home. You know, it's like, they don't do anything like that. Nothing visually cool at all. It's just two people sitting in a room. And that to me seems like a waste of any artist out there. Uh, definitely though, a bond in my opinion. And I hope, you know, if a bond watches this and he disagrees with me, this is not a slam at anybody, like you especially. I think you're a fantastic artist. And I think like you could have done a lot better if you were just cut loose on this book and just got to write the Eddie Brock story. I thought this would have been better if it was just picks up right where the last one left off and we follow Eddie Brock for two or three weeks and then the book ends and the last four pages maybe are Eddie, you know, talking to the maker and then reveal he's talking to the maker. That would have been a much better conclusion, I feel, uh, to this book. Uh, but again, this book suffers from structure and story uh, story moments that uh, that I just can't let go. Uh, if I was the editor on this book, I would crack way more down on Donny Cates and I wouldn't just accept his first drafts because that's what these feel like to me. Uh, but you guys may feel differently, so if so, let me know down in the comments below. I'm sorry for the long rant. I just, I had a lot to say about this one. This really got under my skin. It's like, you know, a dream job for someone like me to write Venom, and I'm sure it was for Donny Cates. And when we get stuff like this, I feel like he's not hitting his full potential. So hopefully uh, he, you know, doesn't do this anymore. I'm getting tired of this structure of storytelling, and I hope he does better with the next issue, which I will buy because of Bond's drawing it, and I'm definitely going to pick up anything that guy draws. Uh, but Donny Cates really needs to step it up uh, because he is not delivering in the way that I know he can because his Thanos stuff, his Cosmic Ghost Rider stuff, his uh, D Doctor Strange stuff, like he really can hit it out of the park. And I need him to do that here on Venom. Uh, he's just not doing it for me. Some of you guys may disagree. So if so, again, let me know down in the comments below. And we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.